Carney Tours Korean shipyard that's vying to build Canada's next submarine fleet. Walking through the massive halls of Hanwo Ocean Shipyard in South Korea, Defense Minister Bill Carney witnessed firsthand the cutting-edge technology that could potentially revolutionize Canada's naval capabilities. The stakes? A multi-billion dollar contract to build Canada's next-generation submarine fleet. Welcome to Maple and Eagle, where we dive deep into the stories shaping Canada's future on the world stage. What you're about to discover isn't just another defense procurement story. This is about Canada positioning itself for the geopolitical challenges of the 21st century and the decision that could define our naval sovereignty for decades to come. So stay with me, because by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly why this tour matters more than you might think. Let me set the scene for you. Defense Minister Bill Carney recently traveled halfway around the world to South Korea, specifically to the sprawling facilities of Hanwha Ocean, one of the world's most advanced shipbuilders. This wasn't a casual diplomatic visit or a photo opportunity. This was serious business. Carney was there to evaluate whether this Korean powerhouse has what it takes to deliver Canada's Canadian submarine program, a project that will replace our aging Victoria-class submarines. Now, before we go further, let's talk about why this matters. Canada's current submarine fleet is, to put it mildly, getting old. The Victoria-class submarines have served us well, but they're reaching the end of their operational life. In an era where Arctic sovereignty is increasingly contested, where Indo-Pacific tensions are rising, and where underwater capabilities are becoming more critical than ever, Canada needs submarines that can operate effectively in the most challenging environments on Earth. The Canadian government has made it clear that replacing these submarines isn't optional. It's essential. And they're not just looking for any submarines. They want vessels that can operate under Arctic ice, patrol our vast coastlines, gather intelligence, and serve as a credible deterrent in an increasingly unstable world. That's a tall order, and it requires partnering with a shipbuilder that has proven expertise in building advanced, reliable submarines. Enter Hanwha Ocean. This South Korean company isn't new to the submarine game. They've built submarines for the Republic of Korea Navy, and they've earned a reputation for quality, innovation, and meeting deadlines. But here's what makes this really interesting. Hanwha isn't the only company vying for this lucrative Canadian contract. They're competing against some of the biggest names in naval shipbuilding, including companies from Germany, France, Spain, and Sweden. Each of these competitors brings their own strengths, their own proven designs, and their own track record. So what did Minister Carney see during his tour that might tip the scales in Hanwha's favor? According to reports, he was shown the company's advanced manufacturing facilities, their quality control processes, and their existing submarine production lines. He met with engineers and technicians who would potentially be working on Canada's submarines. He was briefed on technology transfer arrangements, on how Canadian companies could be integrated into the supply chain, and on the potential for Canadian jobs and economic benefits. This last point is crucial. Any submarine contract Canada signs will need to deliver not just military capability, but also economic value for Canadians. We're talking about billions of dollars in investment, hundreds or thousands of jobs, and the opportunity to build domestic expertise in submarine construction and maintenance. The government has been clear that economic benefits will be a major factor in the final decision, alongside technical capability, cost, and timeline. But let's zoom out for a moment and consider the bigger picture. Why South Korea? Why now? The answer lies in understanding how global defense partnerships are evolving. South Korea has emerged as a major arms exporter in recent years, not just in submarines, but across the board. They've sold tanks to Poland, artillery systems to multiple countries, and they're actively courting customers around the world. Their strategy is built on offering high-quality equipment at competitive prices with relatively quick delivery times. For Canada, Partnering with South Korea offers some interesting advantages. First, it diversifies our defense relationships beyond our traditional partners in Europe and the United States. Second, South Korea has demonstrated a willingness to transfer technology and involve local industries in their projects, something that's very important to Canada. Third, and this is significant, South Korea doesn't carry some of the political baggage that comes with some other potential partners. However, this decision isn't without controversy or challenges. 
Some defense analysts argue that Canada should stick with more established submarine builders who have longer track records with Western navies. Others point out that building submarines is incredibly complex, and any new partnership comes with risks. There are questions about interoperability with our NATO allies, about maintenance and support over the decades-long life of these vessels, and about whether a South Korean design can truly meet Canada's unique requirements, particularly when it comes to Arctic operations. Minister Carney's visit was designed, in part, to address these concerns. By seeing the facilities firsthand, by meeting the people who would build these submarines, and by asking tough questions about capabilities and commitments, he's doing his due diligence. And make no mistake, this is due diligence that matters. We're talking about submarines that will serve Canada for 30, 40, maybe even 50 years. The decision made today will impact Canadian security well into the second half of this century. During the tour, Hanwha Ocean likely emphasized their experience, their technological capabilities, and their vision for partnership with Canada. They would have showcased their success stories, demonstrated their quality standards, and presented their roadmap for how they would meet Canadian requirements. They know this contract could be transformational for their company and could open doors to other Western customers. But here's what many people don't realize. This isn't just about building submarines. It's about building relationships, building capacity, and building a sustainable model for maintaining these complex vessels over their entire lifespan. Canada learned some hard lessons with the Victoria-class submarines, which had numerous issues and required extensive refits. We can't afford to repeat those mistakes. Any new submarine program needs to be designed from the ground up with sustainability, maintainability, and long-term support in mind. The timeline for this decision is still evolving. The Canadian government has indicated that a selection will be made in the coming years, with the first of the new submarines potentially entering service in the late 2030s. That might sound like a long time, but in defense procurement terms, it's actually quite tight. Designing, building, testing, and commissioning submarines is one of the most complex industrial undertakings imaginable. What happens next? Minister Carney will undoubtedly be visiting other potential suppliers, conducting similar tours, and gathering information to inform the government's decision. Teams of technical experts will be analyzing every aspect of the competing proposals, from the submarine's acoustic signatures to their weapon systems, from their crew requirements to their maintenance needs. Economic analysts will be calculating the benefits to Canadian industry. Political advisors will be considering the strategic implications of partnering with each potential supplier. And throughout this process, Canadians deserve transparency. This is public money. These are vessels that will defend our sovereignty, and the decision will shape our naval capabilities for generations. That's why coverage like this matters. That's why holding our government accountable for making the right choice based on the right criteria is so important. Thank you for watching Maple and Eagle. This is the kind of story we're passionate about bringing you, the stories that matter to Canada's future, told with the depth and context they deserve. If you found this valuable, please hit that like button. It really helps us reach more Canadians who care about these issues. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming coverage as this submarine story develops. And drop a comment below. What do you think? Should Canada partner with South Korea for our next submarines, or should